Hello, it is Flores. Thanks for joining us again and welcome back to another exciting and informative video on our YouTube channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to thank you for watching. In this episode, I will be looking into the reason why Kenya volunteered to lead the United Nations approved forces to Haiti, why United Nations Security Council approved troops deployment to Haiti months after Kenya proposed sending over 1,000 officers to the country. I will dive into some specifics here, look at the current situation in Haiti and explore this from a different geopolitical perspective, the history of Haiti itself, the country as a large and more importantly why Kenya has embarked on this historic mission beyond its borders. So I would encourage you to watch this video to the end for clarity and better understanding. So without any more delay, let's just dive straight into it. The United Nations Security Council recently approved the deployment of international forces led by Kenya to curb escalating gang violence in Haiti. The Caribbean country of more than 11 million people, which has requested international assistance more than a year ago to curb the rising insecurity in the country, welcomed the decision. If you look at information, according to information from Haiti, the Haitian people say thank you very much to the Security Council and the Secretary General of the United Nations. Haitian Prime Minister is quoted as saying, the Haitian Prime Minister Harry Henry said on Twitter shortly after the vote uh, was casted. Henry also thanked the East African country for taking the lead in proposing to send troops to Haiti. The resolution authorizes the multinational security support, known as MSS, mission to take all necessary measures to stem the violence. The international forces are not deploying under the United Nations Peace Mission. They will be overseen by Kenyan forces, which received authorization from the United Nations. The 2007 African Union interventions in Somalia to combat armed groups was also authorized by the United Nations. But the question here is, why are foreign forces needed in Haiti? If you look at Haiti, Haiti has recorded over 3,000 homicides and more than 1,500 kidnappings for ransom between January and September this year alone. According to UN figures, gang-related violence has spiked since the assassination of President Jovenel Moise two years ago. If you look at other aspects in Haiti, the violence has forced some over 200,000 people, half of them children, out of their homes according to UN figures as well, adding that the unprecedented level of insecurity has forced tens of thousands of children not to attend school in that particular country of Haiti. Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, where half of the population lives below the poverty line, has a small and ill-equipped military. Its police force, which has about over 10,000 active personnel, has also been unable to contain the violence in that country. The international force will guard important public installations, such as airports and also hospitals, among other places. They will be coordinating with the local police to carry out anti-crime operations. The Dominican Republic has shut its border with Haiti while several other neighbors and also countries in the region has tightened their border security following the uptick in violence in port au prince in the country of Haiti. But the big question here is why is Kenya leading the mission in Haiti? That's why we are discovering this video. If you look at Kenya's perspective, Kenya has a history of sending peacekeepers to volatile countries and offered to send 1,000 personnel to Haiti in July. Nairobi say it wanted to take part in the rebuilding of the country, which has been run by unelected officials for several years. This mandate is not only about peace and security, but also about the rebuilding of Haiti, its political and its economic development and social stability. Kenyan Foreign Affairs Ministry Alfred Mutua on a post account following the UN's approval with regards to that decision. Analysts say that apart from helping stabilizing Haiti, Kenya stands to gain from sending its forces to Port au Prince based on information. On the global stage, sending its forces to Haiti gives Kenya a very serious political capital. In the eyes of the world, Kenya become a dependable ally who is willing to help other countries. Disma Mokwa, a Nairobi-based analyst, told international news media. The mission to Haiti 
create several opportunities for Kenya. Kenyan law enforcement agents will get specialized training and also equipment before they are sent. This will improve the capacity of the force in the long term. Obviously, there are financial incentives. Resources are located to participating in those countries as well as countries taking part in those particular uh, peacekeeping missions. Troops will also be given extra allowances, which is why there is high interest from officers for foreign deployment. The officers also added, most recently, the White House expressed its gratitude to Kenya for assuming leadership of the forces. If you look at different areas, the non-UN mission will be funded by voluntary contribution, with the United States while not sending boots on the ground, pledging up to 200 million US dollars. It is not clear when the forces will be deployed. Recently or last month, so to say, the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said a Kenyan-led mission to Haiti could deploy in months. The international forces have a mandate for a year. If you look at other areas, the big question here is what other countries are sending troops in the country of Haiti? In addition to Kenya, Jamaica and Bahamas and Antigua and Barbados have pledged to send personnel to the violence rocked country. Haiti is led by an elected government of Prime Minister Arred Henry and most countries are reluctant to be seen as propping up a regime that has not been endorsed by the people. Human rights advocates have raised concerns against the deployment of international forces saying it will legitimize the unelected leadership in the Caribbean country. If you look at the past mission in Haiti, past missions to the country have been hit by scandals which led to Haitians taking to the streets and also demanding their withdrawal. The UN's 2004-2017 Minusta mission was highlighted by sexual abuse and also cholera outbreak and scandals, which resulted in the death of over 9,000 people with over 800,000 second. UN soldiers were also accused of fathering babies and also abandoning them. Haiti was free of cholera until 2010 when UN peacekeepers dumped infected sewage into rivers. The MSS will be the first time the United Nations has approved a force to deploy Haiti since the MINUSTAC, which was deployed under its Department of Peacekeeping Operations. The MSS resolutions called for members of the force to be vetted and also rapid investigation into the misconduct allegation, particularly sexual abuse of women and girls. It also calls for careful waste management and also water management to prevent disease outbreaks. We all shall be looking at what happens in that country of Haiti as Kenya takes the lead. It's an important mission for Kenya as Kenya tried to revamp itself and also place itself at the global community making strategic decisions beyond its border and why Kenya volunteered to lead the UN approved forces in Haiti. In a speech recently by the Kenyan president William Ruto who clearly outlined his perspective with regards to Haiti considering the historical nature of Haiti and the pre- and post-colonial impact that Haiti has gone through. We all shall be looking at what happened in Haiti in the next couple of months as Kenya takes the lead from the continent of Africa. We want to thank you for watching. Hopefully, we've informed you regards to the strategic relationship and the reason why Kenya is leading the UK mission in Haiti. And we all shall be looking on what will happen and how Kenya will navigate itself and come out successful or challenging or defeated or others who put it in different ways what Kenya will learn from this mission beyond its borders I want to thank you for watching the Explorer we are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode have a good day bye bye this is a mission for humanity which connects boldly and directly with the founding principles of the United Nations and affirms our shared hope that justice is finally coming to the people of Haiti who have borne the brunt of colonial plunder and repression as well as post-colonial retaliation and exploitation, leaving them vulnerable to geological, climatic, and epidemic calamities. This moment also affirms the Pan-African commitment to our continent's unity together with the African Union's policy of solidarity with the African diaspora in observance of our sacred duty towards our own flesh and blood, carried into captivity to suffer in chains 
in a world far away from home and punished most severely over the centuries for claiming for themselves freedom, the most basic right of every human being. When newly independent states were investing in the future by building infrastructure, setting up systems of self-governance, and developing capacity to flourish in freedom, unfortunately, Haitians were being forced to invest in a cruel past by being made to pay for refusing to be slaves. As a result of this injustice, perpetrated by colonialists with the silent connivance of international institutions, Haiti lost decades of development opportunity and became vulnerable to calamities. It has endured devastating geological and extreme weather disasters which have left the state and its economy strained for the utmost and unable to cope with the challenges of providing basic services. For us in Kenya, this mission is of a special significance and critical urgency. We experience the harrowing brunt of colonialism as well as the long, difficult and frustrating struggle for freedom against those that can influence international institutions to frustrate justice. In our struggle, we always had friends, not an overwhelming multitude of powerful allies, yet nevertheless, true, loyal, and determined friends. The people of Haiti, our dear friends, today stand in need. It is our fundamental moral obligation to be their friend indeed by standing with them. On the 21st of September, I stood before the General Assembly of the United Nations to express the case for the United Nations Security Council to deliver a framework that would facilitate the deployment of a multinational security support mission to Haiti as part of a holistic multilateral response to the challenges faced by the nation. Specifically, I pleaded for a resolution under Chapter 7 of the Charter with the appropriate provisions to facilitate support for the Haiti National Police in enhancing its capacity to effectively provide security for the people of Haiti, their infrastructure, and property. I am delighted that today the Security Council has directly answered this call with UN Security Resolution 2699 of 2023, which mandates the multinational security support mission to reinforce the Haiti National Police with operational support and other joint interventions to enhance its institutional capacity with the aim of increasing its effectiveness in defeating the onslaught of criminal gangs, the rampant violent crime, human arms and drug trafficking, as well as other atrocities. The mission is also mandated to secure the country's critical infrastructure, including air and seaports, as well as other vital transit arteries and intersections. We express our determination that this mission will provide a different footprint in the history of international interventions in Haiti and emphasize that it is aimed solely at providing an appropriate environment for the leadership of both the political and civil society sectors to usher in stability, development, and democratic governance through a political framework owned and driven by the people of Haiti. The resolution marks an important moment in the history of global multilateralism as we engage in international collective action that places human security and dignity at the same level as state security and sovereignty and enables the nations of the world to discharge a collective moral duty of securing justice and security for all peoples of all nations. Thank <laughs> you.